Does your vehicle have poor or even no radio reception? If you can rule out external malfunctions, the problem will be in the car. It's now necessary to systematically check the radio aerial system for faults. Start by applying device-specific diagnostics for troubleshooting. This helps you to easily identify the cause of failure. Evaluate the diagnostic results and then check the antenna and the aerial wire. If these are intact, you should check the radio itself. Always carry out the guided fault finding mode for an initial diagnosis. For this vehicle, you can find the control unit in the block diagram under the label IFE 5F for control unit 1 for information electronics. Read out the fault memory. If you find an entry, follow the test plan step by step. If there is no fault memory entry, use the measured values to carry on troubleshooting. Choose the measured values for the electrical connection between radio and antenna and the corresponding reception levels. These values indicate that the electrical connection between antenna and radio is intact. These measured values indicate the antenna's reception level. Antenna 1 has a value of 40 decibels microvolts. That means the signal strength is 40. The higher the value, the better the signal. Antenna 2 has a value of 0 decibel microvolts. That means it has no signal. Next carry out an electrical test. Take measurements at the rear window aerial. In this case, no signal can be detected. The voltage is zero. There's a short circuit to ground. Identify the point where the aerial wire has a connection to ground. Repair the cable. Measure the antenna's reception level again. Carefully mount the trim. A navigation system requires at least three satellite radio signals. If these are not received, navigation may be interrupted. Ensure GPS reception. In this case, the GPS viewer indicates that the number of received satellite signals is zero. It's now necessary to systematically search for the cause. Start by applying the guided fault finding mode. For this vehicle, you can find the navigation system in the block diagram under the label IFE 5F for Control Unit 1 for Information Electronics. Read out the fault memory. If you find an entry, follow the test plan step by step. If there is no fault memory entry, read out the measured values. Choose the following measured values for the GPS aerial. GPS date and GPS time, GPS quality and GPS fix. These show the signal reception quality of the satellites. In this case, however, no satellite signal is received. The GPS quality is thus invalid. Next, carry out an electrical test. Start at the control unit. Visually check whether the aerial wires are properly connected. 
Connect the test box to the control unit. Measure the voltage between pin 1 and pin 2. The value of 5 volts is the supply voltage for the GPS aerial control unit. It's correct. Repeat the test at the GPS aerial. This value is correct as well. Although the aerial wire is intact, there is no reception. Replace the aerial. Read out the measured values again. The navigation system now displays the satellites according to the signal strength received. The GPS viewer also displays the number of satellites available. In the Golf 7, the R182 aerial receives signals from the remote control. It's also used to send feedback to the remote control. The aerial is connected via a cable to the R149 radio receiver for the auxiliary heater. Pin 1 is connected to the plus terminal and pin 2 to ground. R149 converts the signal received from R182 into a bus message. It transfers the message via pin 2 to the J364 control unit for the auxiliary heater. The signal has a high level of about 13 volts and a low level of about 1 volt. The signal can be measured at both R149 and J364. Check the remote control signals with the help of the measured values. If no signal is received, electrically check the aerial wire and the aerial for electrical flow or short circuit. A coaxial cable is used as aerial wire. It's a bipolar cable consisting of an inner and an outer conductor. A common reason for bad signal reception is a damaged aerial wire. The consequences are no electrical flow, excessive resistance or short circuit. Always check the aerial wire for the following points. Flow, short circuit to ground, short circuit to positive, and short circuit between inner and outer conductor. The wire between aerial and receiver often consists of numerous plug connections. First check whether all aerial wires are properly connected and locked in place. Loose and defective plug housings must be replaced. If the aerial wire is damaged, it must be repaired or replaced. Use the VAS 6720 Professional Repair Set. The aerial amplifier or impedance converter is an important component within the aerial system. 
It's located between aerial and receiver and requires a supply voltage or phantom power. Check this first. Use adapter VAG 1598-43 and test box VAG 1598-42. Measure the phantom power between pin 1 and pin 2. A value of about 8.5 volts is sufficient for the Golf 7. Other models have a value of about 12 volts. With an auxiliary electrical line, you can check whether the impedance converter has a signal amplifying function. This auxiliary line works as an additional aerial. It can be applied at any point along the high-frequency signal path. Check at the radio, at the aerial module output, and between aerial module and aerial, whether reception quality is improved. If the measured values are almost identical, the signal is not adapted. Replace the impedance converter and repeat the tests. The received values should now be significantly higher.